The following lesson is linked to learning outcome four, language. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to identify and explain the meanings of words and use them correctly in a range of texts. Learners should also be able to recognize how languages borrow words from one another. Hi. In the first part of this lesson, on the origins of English, we learned that lots of words that are commonly used by English speakers have actually been borrowed from other languages. We refer to these words as loan words, but a better term to describe them would be copy words, as we don't really intend to give them back. Examples of loan words are ketchup, anorak, kebab, and pylon. In this part of the lesson, we'll look at words that South Africans have borrowed from other languages and have incorporated into South African English. Here's an example. He's a babuti fundi, but he makes briyani like a muhu. Here the words fundi and muhu are not actually English words. This is known as code mixing. The people are speaking mainly English but they're mixing in other words. Here they're having a good skinner about somebody else's cooking abilities. Did you see how I mixed the word skinner into that sentence? That's code mixing. Let's define it. Code mixing occurs when words from other languages are included in a conversation. If you think of language as a code, then code mixing mixes together more than one language. This is a fun way of adding excitement and vivid descriptions into your writing. To show you what I mean, here's a paragraph that describes different cars. It uses lots of code mixing. Let's have a look. Amma gents love their G-strings. They know that these are bound to make them more popular with Model Cs than if they were driving starter packs. Another popular choice to burn rubber in is a Vura, but even a jalopy is better than arriving in a sandwich. If you remove the code mixing and slang from the paragraph, it could be rewritten like this. Stylish men love stylish cars. They know that these are bound to make them more popular with girls who attend suburban schools than if they were driving a car with no extra features. Men also like VR6 cars because these are fast, but even a dilapidated old car is better than arriving in a taxi. Now this version of the paragraph would be understandable to all speakers of English, but I'm sure you'll agree it doesn't have the same colour or vividness as the first paragraph had. Let's have a look at it again and see where the code mixing occurs. The first non-English word is um gents, which you could easily work out means gentlemen or men. And here, Vura means VR6. And I'm guessing here, but it probably got its name from the sound that a VR6 engine makes. Then there are other words that are technically English words, but their meaning is different from the meaning we normally associate with them. Take a look. A g-string normally means a type of underwear, yet here the word is used to refer to a new model BMW. Why has g-string been used in this context? Perhaps a g-string is seen as being trendy. What about calling someone a Model C? This term has a very interesting origin. As part of the dismantling of apartheid, parents of learners at former white schools got to vote as to the future of the school. The Model C option allowed for black learners to attend these former white schools. Nowadays, black learners who attend these formerly white schools are sometimes jokingly referred to as Model Cs. This term means almost the same as calling someone a snob. Here's another English term that has developed a new meaning. What does a starter pack normally mean? And how has this word been used here? 
A starter pack is usually used to refer to the basic kit that'll come with your first cell phone. In this case, the term starter pack has been cleverly used to refer to your first car. Normally a car that you get first is not a very fancy car and doesn't have features such as power steering or airbags. Finally, we get to a sandwich, which is a colloquial term for a minibus taxi. Well, this description brings an amusing mental picture to mind of people being crammed into a taxi in the same way as fillings are squeezed into a sandwich. What we've learned here is that by using words that are unique to South African English speakers or borrowing words from other South African languages can help to make writing more exciting. South Africa has lots of unique and wonderful expressions and you should be proud of knowing them. We've also learnt that using code mixing can make descriptions more lively. Code mixing is positive when your audience understands what you mean, it allows you to express yourself creatively, and the word you use is the best way of expressing the idea. Don't be shy to use the occasional word borrowed from another language when chatting to a friend. Remember that code mixing can be really expressive, but use it carefully, especially in front of people who might not understand what you mean. This can confuse them. Have a look at this example. Jigger left at the robots past the Shabin through the Donga. In this case, the tourist is confused by the code mixing. However, if you're doing a piece of creative writing that's set in South Africa, then you can use some code mixing in the direct speech to set the scene. This will help make your writing seem more realistic. But remember though, to always keep your reader in mind. Make sure that your teacher will understand the words you've used. Also, don't overuse code mixing. After all, you'll be writing an English assignment, not an Afrikaans, Zulu or Sutu one. So remember these points. Code mixing can be negative when it excludes people from understanding, it is overused, it is used in inappropriate situations, or it is used in formal written texts. In other words, use code mixing in informal situations, but avoid it in formal or business writing. Some words are used so frequently that they are no longer seen as borrowed words, but instead are considered to be part of South African English. Michelle Magwood, the book editor of the Sunday Times, reviewed the new South African concise Oxford Dictionary. This dictionary contains a lot of words that aren't used by English speakers in Britain, but are often used in South Africa. Have a look at some words taken from the dictionary. How many of these words do you know? A babalas means to have a hangover. If something's bakhat, it's fantastic. If you're khatful, it means to have had enough. An access bond is a type of mortgage that you can pay off quickly. Farfi is a gambling game. And a bosbarat is a conference. I'm sure that you know some of these words and could even add to this list. Maybe you regularly use some of these words and didn't even realize that they are not part of standard English. We've already talked about how using South African code mixing can help to make your writing more exciting. But using South African words can also help you to fit into a community. Listen to this advice. All you plus yuppies out there, learn these greeting words. Hola, hater, kaufella, kaufella. And if you're greeting an Orlando Pirates fan, say Amma Bacania. And if you really want to fit in, stick an Amma Bacania sticker on your car. Again, notice the fresh and lively style that the code mixing creates. You really feel as if that person knows about the township streets. A lot of the words used in that extract were slang, which is very informal language used by teenagers. But lots of words that were once considered slang 
are now accepted examples of South African English. Do you remember what etymology means? Etymology is the study of the origins of words. In the first part of this lesson, we looked at words that originated from Greek or Latin. But now let's look at some South African English words that originated right here in South Africa. Karoo comes from the Khoi word karo, meaning dry land. You may be a fan of Kwaito music. Kwaito music originated in the townships, but the name doesn't come from there. In fact, Kwaito comes from the Afrikaans word meaning angry or vicious. Maybe you've heard someone say that they're a fundi on the computer or that they'll never be a maths fundi. If you're an etymology fundi, you'll know where this word comes from. Fundi comes from the Izi Zulu word for learner. In this series of lessons, we're learning about different ways to improve our vocabularies. As a South African, you will find that learning more South African expressions will help you to communicate with other people in South Africa. So aim to become a South African English fundi. Goodbye.